plastics in the water, it's in every ocean, it's in the ice, it's in the rain, it's been found in our food. If we don't heed the warnings, uh, I think that we can expect a lot more pollution in our environment. Hey guys, it's Guillory. I'm down on Venice Beach. There's hardly anyone around me, so I feel safe having my mask off. You know, before COVID-19 hit, it kind of felt like the world was waking up to the harm of plastics. People were saying no to plastic water bottles and straws. And across the US, many groundbreaking pieces of legislation banning all kinds of single-use plastics were about to pass. But then coronavirus hit and everything took a sudden turn. Now, as the world tries to protect itself from this deadly virus, conservationists are worried about the impact of COVID waste on the world's oceans. We have the coronavirus and all these masks are now washing up on the beaches. COVID-19 has been around for more than half of 2020 and will be a part of our reality until an effective vaccine is available. At the start of the outbreak, the CDC and WHO recommended face masks and people went to town buying medical grade ones. So much so that frontline workers across the country faced shortages. We're now in a place where masks and even plastic gloves have become a regular part of our lives. But what has taken a backseat in the name of public health is the amount of waste generated by the pandemic. And some of it is starting to end up in oceans and coastal areas. For example, those single-use masks, they can take up to 450 years to disintegrate. Before COVID hit, it kind of felt like the world was waking up to the harm of plastic. And we were sort of beginning to slay this dragon. And then everything took a sudden turn. How did that turn happen in your life as a researcher? I was seeing a lot of kind of promotion for using plastics for hygienic reasons. In March, the grocery stores were, please no uh, personal carrier bags allowed in the store. Some of the uh, restaurants in our vicinity started to offer takeaway. You know, only plastic takeaway containers were now available. So it seemed like a lot of the good work was just unraveling. Elitza Germanoff is a conservation scientist who specializes in microplastics. She also studied microbiology and immunology. Is there a significant um, indicator that this is happening, that we're seeing an increase of COVID waste in the oceans? We now are going to have an uptick of a very specific type of waste. So PPE or personal protective equipment, you know, masks and gloves, the single use uh, ones are made of plastic polymers. These are lightweight materials. They can easily be picked up by the wind and dispersed around. So we're really going to see how quickly something that's been disposed in the last few months makes it into the marine environment. Dr. Germanoff has been in lockdown in Canada and unable to access her marine research station in Indonesia. However, one conservationist based in Hong Kong has been in the field sharing some pretty shocking images. As you can see behind, we have enough trash out here to last an eternity. We're doing our plastic survey that we do every month. And now we have this to contend with. This is four or five days on from when we uh, found and cleared this beach of all the masks. And as you can see behind me, uh, we found another 16 masks. Come down the beach, I'm still finding lots of these. Gary Stokes is a photographer and co founder of Ocean Asia, a marine conservation initiative. When we first started noticing them, it was. Uh, wasn't that shocking at first and then when we finished the count and we had like 70 on this tiny 100 meter beach that's when it started we started thinking hmm hang on okay this is uh this this is going to be a big problem um and this is just one beach what about all the other beaches the extra use of plastics brought about by the pandemic has shown us how bad we actually are at dealing with plastic waste for example prior to covid Medical waste in Wuhan was around 50 tons a day. By the time the COVID-19 outbreak was characterized as a pandemic, they were seeing 250 tons a day by March. That's five times more in a matter of three months. And here in the US, some places are also creating up to 40% more domestic waste with food deliveries and packages. And to add to all this, waste treatment centers have been dramatically understaffed due to lockdowns and efforts to enforce infection control. 
So how does PPE affect marine life and aquatic ecosystems? Uh, for sperm whales, um, certain types of, of plastics, your general white, blue mask could be mistaken for um, some of the natural food that they eat, you know, squid, things like that. For a long time, biologists believed sea turtles swallowed plastic because it looks and moves like jellyfish, which they love to eat. But new research suggests that it's actually the scent of bacteria or other microorganisms accumulating on the plastic that lures in the turtles. This will get into the digestive tract of an animal like a dolphin or a porpoise and it will block it. And that will then lead to certain death from starvation. So, you know, they are going to start washing up in, in you know, dead animals that are washing up on the beach, I'm afraid. What many people don't realize is that plastics come from fossil fuels. So the tanking oil prices in 2020 had a massive impact on the value of plastics. But once the panic of coronavirus started spreading across the world, the plastic industry used this fear and the lack of knowledge surrounding the virus to profit, going as far as pressuring government and health officials to declare plastic as the safest way, coasting off the unproven narrative that reusable is dirty and single use saves lives. In the early months of the virus, many states reversed their plastic bag bans and directed retailers to use single use once again. Now, California, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts are the only states that are allowing reusable shopping bags. And major companies like Starbucks, who had originally allowed customers to bring their own personal mugs, have stopped that practice. Dunkin' Donuts is doing the same. So it has been disheartening, but understandable. The initial shock factor is warranted. I understand that. I think now we need to start getting smart again. Recently, over 100 scientists from 19 countries said that reusables are perfectly safe and don't increase the chance of virus transmission. In fact, they went further to state that plastics are not safer and they could cause further public health concerns. There's been a number of um, studies already right in the beginning of the pandemic looking at how long the virus can live on different surfaces. And in fact, on plastic it can, and, and other harder surfaces, it can live for longer than some of the more porous substances uh, like cardboard or, or um, uh, even cloth. So I don't, see what, I don't see the argument for packaging things specifically in plastic to make it more hygienic. And what about the plastics now being traced in our bodies? An Austrian study from 2018 found microplastics for the very first time in human poop. Based on this study, the authors estimated that more than 50% of the world population might have microplastics in their stools. As these materials spend time in the environment, uh, especially uh, under a sun exposure, UV rays, um, they start to degrade um, into smaller bits. Um, and as they do, they become microplastics. We start to even get into much, much smaller sizes like nanoplastics, which they are small enough to enter our bloodstream and even into our cells. How can we move forward keeping ourselves safe, but also being mindful of the impact that this has on the environment? Reusable masks is a really simple option. We already know soap and water kills the virus, um, so there's no reason why uh, washing your masks, uh, your reusable masks in, in hot water with soap wouldn't do the same thing. I'm not saying we need to stop using plastics. We just need to be smarter about how we use them. Of course, we're always going to need plastic. There's there are certain items that we're always going to need, especially in the medical industry, certain things um, will We'll, we'll always need it, but to, to need it, to, to have it the way that we have been using it with the single-use plastics uh, in our everyday lives is completely unnecessary.